you have just created your very own microscope. Congratulations! A microscope is a device that allows you to look clearly into very tiny things, both living and non-living. A microscope is a very important device for people like doctors, scientists, watchmakers and jewelers because they need to study a lot of small objects. Now that you know how to build a basic microscope, we will briefly understand the principles of science that we can interpret from this simple tactivity. All the items that we have used in this tactivity are easily available in and around the household, except for clear round glass beads of different sizes. This is why we have provided you with a couple of extra beads. With these beads, you will be able to clearly see very small objects and their structure in great detail. Once you have completed this activity at home or at school, you should think about what else you can visualize using this microscope. You may try to look at your fingerprint on a tape and compare your fingerprints with those of your friend. You may also try to look at the pixels of a television or a mobile phone. Do you think this experiment would work for leaves of different thickness? Or for petals from different flowers? How about vegetable peels? We encourage you to observe leaves from different plants and try to find out differences in their structure. You might observe fine hair-like structures on some leaves and not on others. Similarly, you might find a waxy coating on the surface of some leaves but not on others. These differences that you observe with your microscope are very important for the plants. You will learn about these details later in your curriculum. Another variation that you can make is by using beads of different sizes to assemble the microscope. Now observe the same objects. Do you see a difference when you use a bigger bead? What happens to the image when you move your eyes away from the bead? There is a set of observation questions accompanying this activity guide. We encourage you to have a look at them and try to understand what they imply. Once you have assembled the microscope and observed leaf venations with it, you have reached a stage where you can observe many other flat objects with the same microscope. By doing this, you will understand the correlation of size of the image you see with the size of the bead you use. This correlation will be the foundation of the more complex principles of microscopy that you will learn later on. The different venations that you have observed on leaves have a very important role for the plant. Later in your curriculum, you will learn about why different plants have different venation and why it is important for us to know the type of venation in plants. By this simple activity, you have gained insights into the basic principles of optics in physics that are very useful in understanding the details of some other branches of science like biology. Now you have an idea about the focal length of the bead and the effect of different beads, which is nothing but the different focal lengths thanks to the different radii of curvature on the image that you see. You also know now that varying the distance between your eye and the microscope changes the image. This activity has also introduced you to the basic concepts of diversity in the living world. Later on, you will also understand the importance of diversity and variation in biology. This activity is one of the simplest ways to understand very important scientific principles. The concepts that you have learned by doing this activity will be applicable to many other experiments that you do in your curriculum. Making a working microscope is a great thing and you should be proud of yourself for making one. What you have made today is a simple microscope which is the practical outcome of the principles mentioned below. A simple microscope is based on the magnifying property of a single biconvex lens or a glass bead. When the object to be studied is placed at a distance closer than the focal point of the lens, in this case a bead, we get an enlarged image of the object beyond the focal point. The eye should be kept close to the bead so that there is minimum strain on the eye. Also, the object should be placed at a distance that is less than the focal point of the bead. This will result in a sharply magnified image that lies behind the object. That the magnification by a simple microscope is inversely proportional to the focal length of its bead. This means that if a microscope is made with a lens or a bead of a higher focal length than the one you have used, its magnifying power will be less than that of your microscope. A general rule to remember is that smaller the focal length of the lens, greater is its magnifying power. 
Now you should be able to understand why we look through the microscope with our eye placed close to the bead. Keeping the eye as close to the bead as possible makes it easier for you to focus on the image and it also makes mathematical calculations simpler. When you adjust the bead before fixing the apparatus with a rubber band, you make sure that the leaf lies within the focal length of the bead. If this doesn't happen, you will not be able to get a clear image. Therefore, the focal length of the bead is an important parameter. Microscopy is also about the play of light rays. If there is any stray light in your assembly, your image will not be clear. Similarly, if there is not enough light on the object, you will not be able to visualize a clear image. Therefore, it is important to make sure that there is no stray light. But at the same time, the object should be held against a bright background. Finally, it is very important to use clean hands for assembling and using the microscope to avoid any dust or mark on the bead, as this may change the refractive index or transparency and hence the image quality. When you observed a leaf with your microscope, you would have noticed thread-like structures running through the leaf. These are known as veins. Veins are important for the leaf because they provide a physical support to the leaf and they transport water and essential nutrients to the leaf. Water and nutrients are important for the survival of a plant. Therefore, leaf veins are very important for the plant. Microscopy makes it possible for us to look at very small structures with great detail. Some scientific terms. A simple microscope is a device used to magnify small objects using a single biconvex lens. Leaf venations are the pattern of veins in a leaf blade. Parallel venation is a pattern of veins in the leaf blade when the veins run parallel to each other. And reticulate venation, net-like pattern of veins in the leaf blade when several veins diverge from a midrib. Some theory prerequisites. You should have a basic idea of the terms like lens, microscope, light, focus, image, reflection, etc. A basic idea about ray diagrams. Some basic knowledge about the parts of a plant like roots, leaves, stem and their function and simple motor skills like using a pair of scissors safely, handling adhesive tapes, etc. Some theory concepts behind simple microscopy. The theoretical concept behind a simple microscope can be explained with the help of the following ray diagram. Consider a biconvex lens with its optical center C and focus F and F prime. This is part of a microscope. When a small object AB is placed next to it at a distance closer to its focal length, that is between C and F prime, a ray of light that originates from the point A parallel to the principal axis passes through the lens and gets refracted along the line OX. Another ray of light originating from the point A passing through C follows the line CY. Since the two rays OX and CY are diverging, they can be drawn backwards until they meet at the point A prime. The magnified image of the object AB is produced at A prime B prime. As can be seen in the diagram, the image of the object is highly magnified and erect. One point to remember is that the eye is assumed to be placed very close to the lens so that the distance of distinct vision may be calculated from the lens itself. Here the image A prime B prime is formed at the distance of distinct vision D. The primary function of leaves is photosynthesis, that is to make food for the plants by using sunlight. For this purpose, leaves need nutrients, water and energy. While the energy for this process is provided by sunlight, the requirement of water and nutrients is fulfilled by the veins. Plants have different structures that serve different functions. For example, the roots of plants absorb water and nutrients from soil and move it towards the leaves. The leaves make food for the plant from these nutrients and water and send it to different parts of the plant. Veins in the leaves are responsible for this transport. Xylem cells in the veins bring water and nutrients to the leaf and phloem cells of the veins take food from the leaf and distribute it to other parts of the plant. Different plants have a different pattern of veins on their leaves. This pattern is known as venation. Different venation is indicative of different types of plants. Studying venation of leaves helps biologists to categorize plants into different types, for example, monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants, that is, plants with seeds of a single cotyledon and two cotyledons, respectively. 
This differentiation is important for evolutionary and many other biological studies. Leaves of monocotyledonous plants usually have parallel venation. This means that the veins in the leaves of these plants run parallel to each other. Examples of monocotyledonous plants include grass, wheat, maize, and sugarcane. Leaves of dicotyledonous plants usually have reticulate venation. This means that the veins in the leaves of these plants originate from a single big vein and extend in a net-like manner. Examples of dicotyledonous plants include mango, neem, sunflower, etc. Although there are many other differences between these two types of plants, leaf venation is the easiest to look at. Therefore, studying the pattern of veins of a leaf will tell you about the type of plant it belongs to. This information is necessary for detailed studies of plants. Some applications. The simple microscope is a very interesting device. Although you made a very simple model of a simple microscope, there are some slightly more advanced models that work on the same principle that you just learned. A simple microscope can be used for a variety of things, some of which are mentioned here. A simple microscope is a great tool for studying the venation of leaves, flower petals, etc. Magnification by a simple microscope will make it easy for you to understand the differences in structure of various leaves, petals, and vegetable peels. A magnifying glass is also a kind of simple microscope and is used for enlarging the print of a book, texture of a cloth, etc. You can use a simple microscope for magnifying fingerprints. Skin doctors use simple microscopes for looking at the structure of skin in various diseases. A simple microscope is used by jewelers to examine the details of jewelry and stones. Simple microscopes are used by watchmakers to visualize and handle very small parts that are assembled in a watch. Simple microscopes are of great interest to biologists and geologists because they use them to see magnified structures of leaves, rocks, soil, etc. and use these details for their research. We hope that you had fun while assembling and using your own simple microscope. Now that you know the principle behind how a simple microscope works and how useful a simple microscope is, we encourage you to use it for more objects around you. Just like you learned how to determine the type of plant simply by looking at its leaf venation, you will be able to find many more interesting things around you. Have fun! Thank you.